Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's $200 minimum 4v4 variant. Of course, we're watching on YouTube. It's March 29th, and we're loading in here toward our first quarterfinal matchup for this evening. We've got Ethereal going up against Mortal Kings. Unfortunately for myself, not too familiar when it comes down to these players, but uh, still, though, really interested to see what they can try to do and uh, what they can try to obviously show off, potentially, as uh, facing off here, like I said, in quarterfinals. I believe uh, both these teams actually did receive buys, so this is their first, technically, match of this evening. But, uh, of course, hoping that their shots are warm, and it looks like off the start, Slippy is having a pretty solid performance. Six seconds is out of the hill, along with Mac doing the damage in the back lines also with 24 seconds, and he's already on the rotation. It looks like already starting to realize what is the most important thing, which is going to be those rotations, getting ready to come in here toward Fort Courtyard. Play number three is going to be Mazzy in the back lines, trying to take down players from afar and trying to desperately hold on to those very, very covered in spawns. Unfortunately for Mazzy, can't stay alive for much longer, but it looks like his teammate Rami is still trying to lock down time, not wanting to give up Fort Courtyard without a fight. And it looks like they are still trying to hold on for the moment, Mac will be able to add in two in his overall total as far as the kill column is considered with J-Dub from afar still firing back. And it looks like a nade combined with some shots, him and Filmable will be able to drop three and also retake the hill along with that. Despite not having spawns, you have to give massive props, of course, to the Blue Squad, a.k.a. Ethereal, for not giving out Fort Courtyard, for not giving it. Without a fight, and really, right now, if you're in Ethereal's position, be on the rotation, right? You have the guaranteed spawns. You've kind of kept them in the back of their map. Now kind of cover yourself and realize, hey, I've actually, now that we pushed them back for that far, let's hold on here for Castle Road, which can be and is considered the money hill for Gibraltar. Shots coming forward, and like I said, it was a matter of them not really backing up properly. I think when you've got 15 seconds left on that next hill, if you're Ethereal, back up. You've got the spawns in your favor. There's no reason to challenge the last 15 seconds when you've got a money hill like Castle Road up. So I think it's going to be a huge momentum booster when you talk about the guys on Mortal Kings being able to have something like that. You can definitely kind of feed toward your overall advantage, which 73 to 21. It looks like it will be Rami still trying to fight for this one. Like I said, they fought valiantly when it came down to the last hard point. Can they do it? Yet again, but this time with an advantage. 25 seconds left inside of Castle Road, and it looks like from the front and the back lines, they are challenging. And it looks like it will be walking into the line set of crazy views, having multiple angles. It looks like a great kind of challenge there from the end. Kind of a long distance bait and switch as one player enters from one angle, and the other player starts to kind of bait out some shots. But in the end, the spawns will play out too strong. And uh, off of that, though, last few seconds going to be grabbed from the boys on Mortal Kings as Mazzy tries to hold on those stairs but can't do it for more than about, what, 15 seconds, if that. Just tries to hold valiantly. Can't do much more. Of course, these fights through mid-map are going to be huge, and with three dropping just like that for Ethereal, it's going to make things a little bit awkward because you no longer have that mid-map presence, which is going to be pretty coveted if you are on that communication side. All four players in the back of the base right now for Ethereal as they desperately need to get some type of control, maybe even let turret go kind of expire and set up for that mid hard point. As it looks like players start to enter through Mac doing a fantastic job at kind of lying waste, sitting behind walls and finding some pretty easy kills, catching the very fast rotation and maybe even the scatteredness that Ethereal is currently playing with. I mean, being down the way that you are off the start of a match, you can maybe start to play a little bit less passive. As it looks like kills starting to go through that mid-map side. 48 second differential after the first set of rotations, of course, toward the boys on Mortal Kings. As it looks like uh, so far, base god Alley playing pretty decent. Got the fight up out, the glide bomb in his back pocket. 14 and five, now make it 15 and five. Six spree collectively, nine as a squad. And they've got some streaks in their back pocket as well. Fighter pilot and a glide bomb, not far away either from the artillery barrage. And it looks like Filmable actually comes around the corner, takes him down, and just like that, Alley say goodbye toward your artillery barrage. It's gonna be a little bit frustrating, I think it's fair to say, when you're that close and you're playing that well, and just literally one guy comes around the corner, you know exactly where he's coming from, and you just get beamed. It's got to be pretty unfortunate. But with the lead that they have right now, they can't be really taking a whole lot to heart. But uh, speaking of a lead, quickly, things could turn around if these streaks are used properly coming in from Mazzy, as he on the other side, this time for Ethereal, also 
has streaks compared to Ali on the opposite end, who is using those currently at the moment. Glide Bomb gets utilized inside of Comms building. Looks at court Courtyard up and ready to go. Mazzy definitely starting to turn things around for his squad. There's a full four-man rotation coming in here toward that turret side, but it looks like it will be filmable. Watching through this back arch's position, nearly finds two, and it looks like it will be Mac and Co. who will be in that back line trying to act as a sequence Fortunate events. It looks like the fighter pellet starting to come from above. And off the spawn, this could definitely do some damage, but you're talking about 20 seconds inside of Fort Courtyard. And you see Ali, really the only man who's rushing this. So he uses the fighter pellet. Gurney, he takes down two players. But this is what I'm talking about. You, this is such a worrying play because Fort Courtyard, these are valuable seconds, right? But he uses the fighter pellet, a very useful streak, to solo rush into the hill when you've got to be worried about those spawns. That could be in the back of your base at any moment. When it comes down to Castle Road, that was a huge mistake that we saw the guys from Ethereal make on the first rotations. Don't do it yourself. Don't allow for that to happen, as it looks like Slippy is all around the map right now, finding three, now making four kills in a row, nearly earning some streaks of his own. Does get taken down from the excess shots coming in from Raimi. And taking a look, it looks at the backside spawns earned here for the guys in Ethereal. Definitely earning some much needed time as two go down fast. And now it's all about the mad dash over toward turret. Keeping in mind though, Mazzy does have some streaks in his back pocket. Nice turn on toward Mac, but can't find him in the end. As it looks like for now. It is a matter of who can get there first, and it looks like the guys from Cave are going to have an advantage, but not if player number six anything, has anything to say about it. Ali, coming from the back lines, actually has the assistance coming in from Mac and Sippy. Or Slippy, excuse me, not Sippy. I think he actually has Sippy on his uh, UMG username, because he actually uses two eyes. So I've caught it out. I've caught it. I've caught you, Slippy. Your name is actually Sippy, according to uh, the capitalized I in your name. Just messing with you, pal. 24 and 15, though, for Slippy. I think I have to call him by his correct name because of how well he is currently at right now. 24 and 15, him and Ali playing very strong. Both, actually, have been kind of swapping from weapon to weapon. Looks like uh, Slippy does drop at the back lines. And right now, from communication side, it will be the boys from Ethereal trying to get themselves back into this match. Filmable watching over for his squad mate inside of the hill as he his he drops. Filmable now has to try and make his way inside of the hard point just as he grabs a little bit of time inside a turret. He will also quickly fall. And we talk about the difference from first set of rotation toward the second side. Granted, not a crazy amount of score differential, but you talk about the advantage that Mortal Kings had for a short time. Lead starts to kind of get taken down a little bit. And as Mazzy starts to come from the skies, you see how well the streaks are actually, be, are actually being used right now from Ethereal. Trying to bring it back and pit center. Definitely can be a hard point where to a naked eye, it can seem as if it's just a contest fest. You're not really going to have a whole lot of success as J-Dub stabs Slippy in the side. And you can see, no communication given right there. Mac does not receive a call out whatsoever. J-Dub is inside of the window room and has nobody to have a call out for him. Nobody knows exactly where he is. That's, that's a really frustrating thing to see just because of how important a flank like that is. Nothing is gained from it. So it looks like rotation now being made. Nazi does not spot out one. Does it get dropped? They're not going to have any idea that Ali is here this fast. Just as I say that, though, Fibble has already got a pre-cooked nade and tells Ali to catch. Just as that happens, he also falls from a very high point of view. As we are now within just about 10 seconds of one another. Ethereal starting to catch fire. Mazzy nearly turned on to one. Fillable, though, in the back lines. Does get dropped coming in from Mac. And now with 34 seconds left instead of Fort Courtyard. This is a very interesting rush. I say interesting. I say I would rather say maybe a very worrying push or basically it's, it's a very worrying scenario right now because they are rushing for that time. But they're also sacrificing what could be spawns in the backside of Castle Road. So it looks like that will take place. Spawns 
as you do grab those last 15 seconds, that's awesome. You're going to maybe tie the game, maybe even take the lead, but you do give those spawns away. So now this is going to be the test. Whether or not that push was worth it or not is the ability for them to try to break in inside of this hill. Fumble has a free lane. His teammates open up so much space for him because of the shots that they start to fire from the opposite end coming through that mid cut. You know, just like that, spawns coming in again again. If they take out these players, they could be good to go. But three players end up dropping. Actually, one of them happens to be from a team kill. So now it's up to Rami and J-Dub. They both fall. Fimble, though, from the back lines is trying to keep the pieces together, but they are not successful in that feat. 30 seconds left on Castle Road. Valuable time. Currently going the way of Mortal Kings. Stun gets tossed down, and Rami, fully aware of the spawns in the back lines, takes out one, not having a whole lot of teammate support, though. He's by himself. He's rushing solo, and that's going to absolutely tell the tale of what was a remaining time inside a castle, right? Back to back to back rotations. Teams have been rushing from either side to try to grab the last 15 seconds inside of the second hill, inside of Fort Courtyard. Grant, that's a great hard point to hold, but we talk about Castle Road, the difference that it makes. Heading into this hill, what, this is about a, what, a 14 to 15 second lead toward the set of Mortal Kings that you give them? You had the lead. You had the lead. And now it's back and forth. Ali sitting through mid-map, holding a really big point of view to be watching, and we can kind of really just test the ability for Rami. Sitting from this point of view, and, and Rami, since he doesn't have communication control, has to be very wary of that mid-map presence. We talk about Gibraltar, the initial, as J-Dub gets a nice kill into Mac there. We talk about the ability for Toro. Which side is more preferred? It's changed as the game has gone on from being cave side now toward communication side, just because you have that ability to kind of have the closer lane inside of middle map. So you kind of have two overall perspectives rather than one. Granted, of course, when you do possess cave, it's a lot easier to hop inside of the hard point, but... You've got consistent shots coming from overhead perspectives along with maybe some good nade usage. Their overall advantage can start to slip away, but two seconds left. Can they hold on strong? And yes, Ali and Co. from the side of Mortal Kings will be able to hold on for a victory. Back and forth we went, though, in this match. I've got to give credit to both of these squads. But I think really when it kind of comes down to a big difference maker in this series was the initial time that was given. The, the initial beginning to this map, which was Mortal Kings kind of being given some free seconds from time to time, right? Um, we talked about, like I said, I, I think to me this game, you know, while it was solidified in different positions, it really was solidified when it came down to the overall ability of teams allowing the presence of those spawns toward uh, Castle Road. As we're going to take a look quickly at our uh, Hardpoint Gibraltar scorecard, See exactly how this game obviously did go. It looks like Pit Center, a big difference maker when it comes to both these squads. Of course, Mortal Kings, the bottom squad, and uh, it is Ethereal who are the top team. Uh, 77 to 38. Big difference maker when it comes to the Pit Center. That is definitely an outlier to say the least. Not at all a common stat line to see when it comes down to the initial hard point, which can be very spotty from time to time. We take a look at Courtyard. 70 to 29. Are you noticing a pattern? Dominance in hard point number one and a flip-flop of dominance in hard point number two. One team preferring one and one team preferring the other. As like I said, Courtyard dominated by Ethereal. Cast Road, though, a lot closer. 65 to 52. And we talk about Turret as well. 79 to 53. A not too much of a difference maker, but one that obviously uh, goes to show a outliers to why the victory probably goes the way of Mortal Kings. But like I said, when it comes down to this map, I, I think both teams were kind of allowing the ability for Castle Road to be close. The first set of rotations, right, it was the guys from Ethereal making a rush, right? They're making kind of a, a three-man rush to, to grab the last 15 seconds when you're allowing the enemy to get spawns for the Money Hill. The money hill for the map. Why would you allow them to have spawns? I know it was just kind of questionable plays from time to time. I think for Mortal Kings, it was maybe Slip, I think, who um, kind of like solo rushes in toward um, you know, hardpoint number two, of course, on Fort Courtyard as well. By himself, solo rushes, uses a fighter pilot, I think, to rush inside that hardpoint, while also keeping in mind that he's grabbing 15 seconds, potentially, because the enemy's obviously spawning there for the time, wastes his streak, kind of contests by himself and also has the fact of worrying about if he kills anyone, the ability to kill them that quickly can also give them spawns for the next hill, which is exactly where your team is running toward. So there was just kind of some interesting plays being made from either squads from time to time. 
Uh, I know filmable, despite a loss, ends up finishing off 35 and 31 with a minute and 30 inside of the hill. So obviously we saw some good moments coming in from Ethereal from time to time. But it was obviously a pretty big, pretty big difference maker when it came down to certain hills, especially hard point number one and on hard point number four. So with that, though, hard point are, is obviously concluded with. Now it's time for some search and destroy, which is going to be on St. Marie Dumas. Welcome back, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's tournament, of course, the UMG Line $200 minimum 4v4 variant. Of course, speaking of variant, we're now loading in for some search and destroy, and kills are already taking place in quick succession. Three players alive here in... Round number one, Mazzy, of course, from the side of Ethereal, wanting to bring himself back into this match, early back into this series, as they did unfortunately lose map number one to Mortal Kings, 250 to 213 on Harmpoint and Gibraltar. But 1v2, give you some momentum. Toss up the stun. As soon, yeah, as soon as he even just pulls the pin, they're going to know exactly where he's at, <laughs> tries to make his way around the corner, but gets greeted with quite a few bullets. All the stro all, all the more strong though, coming in from Slippy. Able to get the work done there, but uh, Slippy, I believe, had a very strong performance when it came down to the hard point. Uh, him and Ali were kind of the big difference makers, especially when it kind of came down to the scoreboard. So uh, as they both kind of collectively combined for four in total, could be the main guys you're looking out for when it comes down to the rest of this series. Keeping in mind whether or not it could be. A CTF, which really all sets the be at the table here for Ethereal. Up to bat on offense here. We'll see what they can try and provide. As it looks like pretty much when it comes into St. Marie Dumas, be expecting quite a bit more B pushes than A, just because the ability to kind of hop inside the side is a lot easier. Uh, of course, spawns have kind of been changed up a little bit to make the defense have a little more of an easier time for defending this site, because at times, and even the beginning of this game, Offense was actually preferred quite a bit of the time, which is very uncommon when it comes down to uh, Search and Destroy and Call of Duty. Just because the ability is going to hop inside of this narrow corridor. If you had top restaurant control, which is exactly where Mac is at right now, it's almost impossible for the defensive team to break. But it looks like uh, Mac and Co. will find all four in quick succession. Crazy Views, though, finding the ladder of that. Says they're going to go and hand off the defuse toward Slippy who should be good here for some streaks. Yes, yeah, so it does earn the Fighter Pilot and the Glide Bomb, which is pretty impressive. After just two rounds of play, they've already got streaks at their side. And if you're a fan of Mortal Kings, you've got to be feeling pretty solid right now. you got streaks in your back pocket. Granted, I think it was Slippery. It might have been Allie, actually, who I was talking about uh, in that Gibraltar game where he was kind of using streaks in an unnecessary way. can't remember if that was Slippy or, or Allie. I think I said it was Slippy. But, you know, my, my apologies if I said the wrong person. But still, we'll see what Slippy can do with these in his possession. Regardless, though, it is an advantage for them. And you can kind of see them putting the bomb in his hands for the ability. The artillery barrage would be preferred. Maybe he could also be the objective man for the squad. Might just so happen to work out. He did plant the bomb in the uh, round number one. And, yeah, fillable. Going to have to stare at the sky. As he cannot do much more than that. It'd be awesome if he could like shoot streaks down like he could in previous cards. That'd be pretty cool. But not in this game. Not in this match. Slippy, welcome to your artillery barrage, my friend. And Mazzy is almost so overtaken by the fact that the bomb was planted and he was just looking at it that he couldn't even take him out. So uh, Mazzy have to recollect with his teammates here a three versus three as they're all entering in from different point of views. And unfortunately for him, Slippy gets the advantage yet again as if this man needs more... Points toward his streaks that he's already earned. Finding kills when he needs to, and I believe Ali as well will find the remaining one. And he was also very close towards streaks, I think. So with him staying alive in this round, that's going to spell even more disaster. If you are on the set of Ethereal, an A rush coming in from Mortal Kings, kind of argue was a little bit of a uh, interesting strategy coming out. But, uh, okay, no. Not, not as, I thought that Alley was a lot closer to streaks than uh, 100 out of 625. So my apologies for that. Because <laughs> where he was like 200 points away, but not at all the case. But it looks like uh, maybe taking a page out of Mortal King's book. It worked for them last round. Why don't we try it and see how it works for us? Ethereal up to bat again. 
What can they do? Backs are kind of against the wall, and Mazzy tries to go for the Delphin dive across that mid cut, and he will get dropped. And here comes the artillery brush on this site. As soon as they get the call out, the streaks are in use, and it looks like Alley is in the back lines. And just like that, the Dolphin dive into the dead body. That's rather unfortunate. Forward to zip. Slippy. Slippy little snake, according to his uh, little card there. Four to zero, man. Wow. That's uh, it's kind of unfortunate. I mean, it wasn't. I don't know how they really explain it. I mean, <laughs> like, it's been a good game. And by no means has, you know, Ethereal looked bad by any means. But they just can't get these rounds underway. And it's really just a matter of kills collectively happening in such a short sequence of time. What they really need to do, though, is just get a strong defensive round under their belts. They started off map number one in a little bit of a slow fashion. Maybe map two could be the same. Around here would be big, and finding first bloods are going to be crucial, but no presence is in this B site. Not a stun, no grenade was tossed at the beginning of this round, nothing. They try to shut them down inside of this B site, and just like that, Slippy gets granted his seventh kill. Fighter pilot at his backside, and Mazzy needs to win this gunfight, is able to make it happen, so two versus two. Bomb is ticking away, and just like that, Ali taking out one from the side. As he all by him's lonesome, getting some shots coming in here from Mac, pre-firing, knowing exactly his position. Five rounds down, and each one of them chalked up toward the side of MK, as they are looking good to take down the search and destroy. I think it's fair to say, from uh, anyone's perspective, it's got to be that. If you're on the side of Ethereal, you you, you maybe could. Try to grab something. Unfortunately for them, though, they are going to be on offense. So they can't really kind of sit at bay, wait for streaks to maybe expire. They have to really try to make a rush forward and whatnot. But in that last round, though, we talked about the, the B presence for a defensive team needs to be there. And in that last round, they let Mortal Kings walk into the bomb site and have free reign. And speaking of free reign, it looks like, yet again, it's going to be Mortal Kings who actually allows the side of Ethereal to do the exact same thing. Granted, it was greeted with some streaks, and it was greeted with a little bit of presence. The fighter pilot actually comes through, but does not shut down J-Dub, counting, counting his blessings, rather, at the fact that he does have Mountain on. But can't count for much longer, as Filmable does take down Alley two versus two, and Mazzy does have the ability to shoot through that kind of wooded up window. But it looks like Slippy will be there for the challenge in the end. Going to let the presence be felt as a hot 6-0 here in map 2 to give the boys on Mortal Kings a free pass into the next round. And that's a way to progress yourselves to the semifinals. I mean, generally, right? Because Mortal Kings and Ethereal, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, of course, do have... Uh, buys, I believe, in the uh, first round. So this is their first match of the night. And Mortal Kings, especially in the search and destroy, right? They look very, very strong. Um, I, I think it's, it's fair to say for Ethereal, right? One round that obviously stood out to me, I know I called it out a few times, uh, was I think it was like round number five or round number four. Uh, basically, it was the factor of not having presence toward themselves on defense. I mean, legitimately, Mortal Kings walked into the B site. They walked into the A site uncontested. They had no problems whatsoever. Thank you for that scoreboard. We had no idea what happened there. Uh, six rounds in a row. We obviously got that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, still, though, like, Mortal Kings, they just were able to walk into bomb sites and planted it down with no presence. Like, I, I can understand, like, okay, we'll toss out a name. We'll toss out a stun. We'll try to bait them, you know, to an extent. But you're not having anything tossed over at a bomb site that could be argued for from time to time. I've even seen some, even seen some pro players talk about it today. It's one of the easiest bombs to try to get down. So why are you allowing it in, in Call of Duty World War II? Why are you allowing that bomb site to just be free and open, ready to go? I don't know. I just I just felt like from Ethereal they were kind of playing to not lose rather than to win. They're playing to hopefully try to progress themselves toward a map three. Like maybe if they, you know, if the side from Mortal Kings, you know, slips up and whatnot, maybe we could try to get a victory. But it was just a matter of them kind of playing to me a little bit. I don't want to say scared, but a little bit too passively, and not really allowing themselves to kind of be in front with big one v one engagements and whatnot. But uh, we talked about Mortal Kings though. Slip finishes off Slippy rather 
finishes off nine and two. Uh, Mac finishes off six and three, with Alley finishing off five and two. All of them pretty much have strong performances. It's kind of hard to find kills when you're dominating in a six zero in a six zero fashion. And uh, Slippy is finishing off nine and two, along with two plants and two diffuses. Got to give this man a lot of credit. Overall, fifteen hundred and fifty score. Massive props to Slippy in this map number two. Definitely the MVP. But who's really the MVP when you six zero? It's got to be a team effort. Let's go take a look at our bracket for tonight to see how things are obviously lining out for the time. It looks like in our semifinals, we've actually got our final four nearly set. Shout out to March Madness. Uh, really looking forward to seeing Loyola make it to the final. No, we're not going to be talking about that. Uh, Landon might be a little bit biased toward March Madness. One of my favorite times of year. Uh, but everyone's making their brackets I've seen so far throughout Twitter. It's like a it's like a big social media thing to do, I guess. It's March Madness. Same thing happens every year. I don't know. Uh, we got Kilo7, though, facing off against Mazer Gaming. My opinion, I think we could definitely be seeing a rematch actually take place between Mazer and Vex. They actually, I believe, faced off in last week's tournament uh, there as well, where Vex actually managed to get the victory. Speaking of victories, though, Vex is actually on a three tournament winning streak, winning our Thursday tournaments three nights in or three, three weeks in a row, looking to make the four Pete, as yeah, so that's definitely a one interesting factor to be looking out here for our bracket. Uh, but at the bottom, though, we've got Hydra currently going up against Orglis. And for those who aren't familiar with the uh, Orglis team, of course, like who is on that team, really, to be, to be specific, it's actually Tiny, Juju, Trixilla, and OOG the Legend. So pretty interesting matchup toward the bottom is what Mortal Kings is obviously waiting on. And like we said, toward the top, Vex waiting on who will make it there to face them up in the semifinals as well. Of course, two were awesome remaining matches in the semifinals. Of course, who will join alongside them is the question to be asking currently. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for the time. We're heading to a quick commercial break. But before we do that, I have to give a quick, excuse me, a quick shout out to our sponsors for tonight. Of course, it is Scuff Gaming and Meta Threads, the official clothing brand of UMG Events. Of course, ma massive shout out to our sponsors for tonight. I do apologize if you guys have heard me maybe cough from time to time still trying to get through the sickness it's a little bit there just a little bit but trying to trying to obviously get through that and uh, obviously have these 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 matches broadcasted for you i don't know what it is i can't get my words out tonight maybe it's the fact that i am using a five guys menu because i forgot my notes tonight i have to use the back of it yeah we're going kind of old school for this evening um and also for those who maybe tell me